Uh, welcome to Off the Cuff with Namrita. Hope, uh, listeners, you are having a wonderful, wonderful morning and a happy new year to all of you. And uh, I wish you love, laughter and success in the coming year. And um, I'm so honored and blessed to start this new year with an interview with, with a truly incredible woman who has helped millions of people during the pandemic in India and is constantly working to uplift the lives of rural women through her community work. I met her personally during my uh, visit uh, recently to India, and it was such a pleasure talking to her and meeting her and knowing about her work. So here she is again, uh, Neeti Goel. Welcome to my show. Thank you, Namrita. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you so much. So Neeti Goyal is an entrepreneur, philanthropist, and a restauranter who has a highly successful chain of restaurants in Mumbai. She is inspiring, hardworking, and extremely compassionate. She has been featured on the covers of so many social magazines and is continuing her journey of helping others. She was recently awarded Iconic Woman of the Year Award at the Society Achievers Award, which was presented to her by the Chief Minister of Maharashtra. And uh, you have so many awards and so many accolades and very well-deserved, I'll say. So, uh, Neeti, to, you know, just to start with, tell us about your journey from an award-winning restauranter to becoming a social entrepreneur. What made you, you know, shift uh, from hospitality to taking care of people and reaching out to the underprivileged? So Namrata, I would say it's not a shift because hospitality is also about feeding people and I'm okay. still doing that. It is just feeding the people who can't afford it. So it's, it's called social entrepreneurship. So okay. I think I was in hospitality because God was just preparing me for a bigger cause. Mm. And that's something which I realized when the pandemic hit and mm. India being a country with a lot of migrant workers who are working mm. in metro cities, of Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore. They come, come from all different states of UP, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, you know, all the Ranchi, all these places they come from. Yeah. So we have them in lakhs in the metro cities because these are the people who are actually doing the infrastructure projects. They are building the roads. They are building our nation with their own hands. And when I saw their plight, they didn't even have one square meal a day they used to eat once in two or three days. I have seen tears in the eyes of mothers who are crying because the children haven't eaten for two days. I think the worst kind of torture is for a, to see a mother, to, mm. for her child to go hungry. Mm. And that's when I realized maybe I'm a restauranter and I'm in the business of, you know, uh, food. And God was just preparing me, prepping me for a bigger cause and where we were doing fine dine restaurants and, doing yeah. about 150, 200 covers a day. Mm -hmm. And here I was doing one lakh meals a day, which is free for the migrant workers. So the whole pandemic brought a huge transformation in me and the pain, the agony of mm -hmm. people and the kind of distress people were going through. I think I just felt one with them. Mm -hmm. I thought, what if I was one of them? And when you actually become one with the people who are around you, you start feeling their pain. And that's when I wanted to do whatever I could to resolve that. And that's how my journey started. That is amazing. And you're just being humble by saying that you were in a hospitality and you started. Because, you know, Neeti, not everybody in a place of pri privilege has empathy for the uh, unfortunate. And you, you're saying you uh, felt one with them. That's a huge, huge, uh, you know, way of thinking. Not everybody does that. You know, I read that the act of giving is more readily talked about than accomplished and you accomplished it so uh tell me about the incredible work that you started during the pandemic uh you had a lot of initiatives like ghar bhejo was one with the actor sonu sood then there was uh khana chahiye uh so tell me a little bit about your work that you did uh, so i'll tell you when the pandemic hit uh, just two three days before we saw a lot of hungry people around us not hmm. that we could do anything about it but I just stepped out uh, just two days before the lockdown was announced in India. Mm -hmm. And we saw some children eating mud. And my daughter pointed it out to me. And I was like, oh, you know what? They must be just playing with mud. The mind just doesn't go that they would be eating mud. 
then we went and we spoke to them they were actually eating mud because there was nothing to eat so that's when we made like uh, some 500 meals in my restaurant and we got them to distribute and the minute we stepped out even if we had 12000 meals we would have run short of meals it was so bad the situation yeah. was stressful like anything mm. that's when we decided to form this initiative called khana chahiye where which means food need for food yes. and uh, four friends joined together to form this initiative mm. and we started it with our own funds we started making these meals it was very difficult to convince people at that time because everyone was sitting in the comfort of their home and there was no media coverage for them to see what is actually happening on the streets so for people to convince that there are these hungry people there are children who are sleeping hungry there are women out there who are pregnant who are not even getting one meal a day hmm. it took hmm. us a lot but i think when you are willing god is willing everything falls in place so in a week's time we had scaled up to 15000 meals a, a day and in about uh, you can say 15 days time we were doing 1 lakh meal free meals a day so we actually got on to uh, contacting all the fellow restauranters we opened up their empty kitchens we hired their staff to make the meals so the food was made in absolutely organic environment the food was clean it was hygienic it was properly managed so we could do all that then we had a uh, almost 600 volunteers with us wow. who would go and distribute these meals because the time lapse with india it's very hot in may june Yes. so we wanted the food not getting spoiled so the time lapse between the food being cooked and actually distributed we wanted it to be not more than an hour so we had a huge team of volunteers and different routes where the food was distributed so during this work we ended up adopting 32 orphanages 800 sex workers a rambo circus and then we were working with women in jails because they didn't have sanitary napkins and other essential items mm. so we actually uh, you know we were giving all these essential items in the jails then we were doing a lot of work with the old older people because all these old age homes were like you know they were getting no funding because nobody was really stepping out so mm. in india there is a tradition if there is any birthday and any celebration you go and you feed the old people yeah. but during the pandemic that all stopped Stopped, yes. So, so we were taking care of that. Then we set up migrant camps in uh, all the outgoing points of Mumbai. So we serviced five lakh migrants who were walking back home with slippers, with ORS, with fruits, you know, with things like that. Mm-hmm. So there was mm-hmm. one message, uh, a media report where I came across where one child died in a in a pravasi train because there was no food mm-hmm. and the train was delayed for forty eight hours. that's when we contacted the central railways and we are decided to adopt all the migrant trains which originated from mumbai wow so that was a total of 282 trains carrying almost 10 yes. lakh passengers and we provided them with juices with fruits with uh, matthi and you know thep glass and things which don't get spoiled with biscuits so that they travel we could just ease their travel so during this time we me and sonu were doing a lot of work we saw a lot of people walking so this is before the trains had started we yes. stopped and we spoke to them and they said that uh, they were walking back home and they were from uttar pradesh which is about 17 1800 1800 kilometers of from mumbai so we said how are you going to walk so much mm. so they said that we've been thrown out of our homes because there is no place we don't have uh, money to pay rent we are on the roads we don't get even like one meal in two days so we'll die in bombay so we rather die on the road at least it's like we made an effort to reach back mm-hmm. and that's something which really touched us they had small children with us they they had pregnant women they had older parents it was really heart wrenching mm-hmm. so we requested them to stay back and we would send them home so they actually mm-hmm. mocked us saying that madam gas road pe cycle nahi hai aap hame kaise ghar bhejoge Yeah. we said okay yeah. you trust us till the time we send you you stay under the bridge mm-hmm. we will provide you with food and everything luckily i had a whole lot of gulab jamuns which uh, somebody had donated some 60000 gulab jamuns were in my car so i distributed yeah. all that and I, so that was very alluring for them yeah. and they said okay we will wait here you give us food and all i said yes please we'll do that then when we and sonu came back we were wondering where are we going to get these vehicles to send them because there was a lockdown yes have called up about uh, at least about 60 70 travel companies everyone was shut nobody was answering the calls 
finally we came across this one guy who had a fleet of 120 new buses so he agreed on a condition that we would insure all the buses against any damage that would happen because of the lockdown if you know the buses are burnt or if there's stone pelting or anything we would reimburse him the cost and he finally agreed so after that, it was a nightmare to get the permissions to get these people to Uttar Pradesh because every state had shut their borders. Yes. And it was as if it was becoming international borders. If you had to cross, <laughs> it was a nightmare. So that's a very long, drawn story. But cutting it short, after almost a week of struggling to get the permissions, to get everything going, we finally managed to set the first 500 workers back home. And that was the start of Ghar Bhejo. Absolutely. And I think you managed to send millions after that. that yeah, 1.5 lakh migrants. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing. Um, uh, Neeti, but you know, the numbers you're talking about is uh, massive. So how did you go from being a like a completely unorganized operation to such a huge, you know, Amita, that's a very big question. In fact, there is a lot of research going on that. Okay. Uh, in fact, you know, uh, there is a lot of, I don't want to take names right now, but a yeah. lot of international universities in USA, in mm. Australia, in oh. India are doing a research on how a set of unorganized people could <laughs> achieve those scale of operations in a that lockdown. Massive. So, yeah. so I'll tell you, I think where there is a will, there is a way. We did not take no for an answer. Mm. For us, it was like, it has to happen. We have to do it. No mm. matter how you find your path. In fact, I would like to share with all your listeners, you know, that there is such been learning lessons from my own self in the pandemic that mm -hmm. I have realized that when we accept challenges and when we, uh, we just think that we are not going to take no for an answer and we know we are going to do this and we set a deadline for ourselves. Okay, mm -hmm. by 15th of Jan, I am going to achieve this. Mm -hmm. It is going to happen. The whole universe will conspire to be with you to make it happen. So just believe in yourself. I think that's it. The biggest challenge I'll tell you with the Ghar Bejo was the funding because it was really expensive to send migrants. So one migrant labor would cost us two rupees a kilometer. Almost 1500 kilometers makes it about 3000 rupees a person. Mm. A bus would cost anywhere between one and a half to two lakhs mm. just to send migrants back home. So, you know, to convince the corporates, they would say, it doesn't come under a CSR. How do we pay you this money? It's not CSR. It's unheard of. Mm -hmm. So we were like, it's saving human life. I mean, to say you're ready to pay us 8,000 rupees a month for their food for 30 days a month, two meals a day. You rather give us 3,000, which is only like half of that, 30% yeah. of that. And you will see the person home. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but still it took us a lot of time to convince people, but we just believed in ourselves. Mm -hmm. We kept doing the work. And finally, everything fell in place. All donors fell in place. And it just wouldn't have been possible without the help of volunteers. We had volunteers pan India. We had one guy who was a software uh, intelligence guy. So he had a team of almost 800 people. He quickly developed softwares where there was a helpline. And people would just call that number. And mm -hmm. automatically, it would segregate into the state and then into the district. And it would even prioritize the list in terms of pregnant women and children first and then wow. men later so we had a priority list as well ready within seconds so i think it's all the combined efforts of everyone put together that the whole scale of campaign was possible so we had experts behind us definitely absolutely if you have a good intention and you know and i'm sure yes. uh, you know that's what happened with you Besides that, you you are also, uh, you know, you have another initiative called the uh, Nari Niti now. Uh, yeah, that's right. Where you've helped one lakh uh, rural women, I think in UP. If I, so tell, so tell it's in me. UP, it's in UP and NP. And MP also, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I so think I'll tell you, so after, the, so after the pandemic, I realized that there is a lot of potential in women. Mm. And it's just mm. untapped. I'm talking mm. about India. And yes. especially if you see the rural villages, if we mm. want our nation to progress, if we want, you know, our Prime Minister Ji ka jo ek sapna hai, Atam Nirbhar Bharat, Bilkul. that can only happen if we work at the grassroots levels, which is the villages, which is the core of our country. 
and lot of people are there who are extremely talented mm. but they don't know what to do with their talent and they don't know how to use their skills or even how to use their labor so mm. this is something i realized in the pandemic because we were in touch with all the women the mm. women were so smart uh, namita i want to share this one incident yes. mm. where uh, we had set up a migrant camp mm. on the way for people walking and mm. there was this old lady she was almost 80 plus and she could barely walk so we asked her that uh, it's okay if i say in hindi because uh, yeah 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 it's both yeah mm. we asked her ki aap kaise chaloge itne kilometer aur aapke sath bachcha hai aapka pota poti hai aapki bahu hai bahu was pregnant as well oh. you know what she told uh. she said i will not walk i will die on the road wow. i know i will die but at least i will die Mm. thinking that mm. i managed to make my son reach home and he did not die his kids did not die because of me because they were taking care of me can you believe the kind of sacrifice you yeah. know these people are the real <laughs> heroes <laughs> of our country <laughs> i know but i'll tell you amrita these people are the real heroes of our country yes. they yes. are the ones who know the value of sacrifice mm. they know empathy mm. they know courage the kind of courage these people have shown is it possible we won't even think of walking mm. 20 kilometers they mm. thought of walking 1500 kilometers with children bags and their mm. elderly parents this mm. is courage this is determination mm. this is a huge learning lesson in mba i would say that when you put your mind to something you are going to make it mm. no matter how so luckily we managed to make that lady stay back and we said we will send you back mm. and they send her home and the wife has delivered now a child oh. and everything is good yeah so all is good but it was a very emotional thing and there are hundreds of emotional stories like that i mean to say if i tell you guys uh, you won't believe the kind of stuff that has happened Shosha is a creative Indian restaurant located in the heart of Silicon Valley. Shosha is a woman-owned business that serves traditional Indian flavors assimilated with molecular gastronomy techniques. The best Indian bar with happy hours in the Bay Area serves handcrafted drinks inspired by flavors from India with modern craft cocktails that are presented in unique ways. Shosha is a modern take on traditional Indian cuisine. We specialize in corporate luncheon, anniversary celebrations, birthday parties, and catering. Do check us out for a memorable modern Indian dining experience. Shosha is located at 141 South Murphy Avenue in Sunnyvale, California.